It's customary for a fighting game story to include a tournament where the host is only interested in using the combatants for a science project. And that's pretty much the gist with Tekken 1. The Tekken series is one of my favorite fighting game franchises, and it's a series I grew up playing from the very beginning. I'm a huge fighting game fanatic, so this series was a pleasure to stick with. Each new game just kept getting better and better. I always loved how completing the arcade run with a certain character could unlock a new character. Well, it would unlock a new character. So it gave you a reason to play as every single character in the game. Especially since each character had their own cinematic ending instead of what most fighting games had, which was a still image and a bunch of text to read. Which, ironically, that still tends to happen with fighting game character endings. To this day! But let's talk about the first Tekken movie known as Tekken the Motion Picture. This flick came out on January 21st of 1998, a year after the release of Tekken 3. It was animated by Studio Dean, and a couple interesting notes about this is that it's one of the first OVAs to use digital ink and paint. And when this OVA first released in Japan, it was actually a two-part episode, each being 30 minutes long. Then when ADV Films released it on DVD and VHS with an English dub, they turned it into a movie since it was pretty much an hour long when combining both episodes. Weird how the VHS tape of Tech in the motion picture is white. Why did they go with white? I believe this movie is based on the events of Tekken 1 and 2 since it has characters from both games and the story for both games happens to be the same. The host of this tournament is Heihachi Mishima and he's the leader of a giant multinational conglomerate known as Mishima Zaibatsu. Heihachi announced the King of Iron Fist tournament aka Tekken. Defeat me and you will win 1 billion dollars and the title of world's strongest. Now, every fighter has their own reasons and motives for competing in this tournament, which is where we get lots of memorable characters in the series. My favorite from Tekken 1 and 2 was Martial Law, since he was practically a Bruce Lee reference. Anyways, in the first Tekken tournament, the main focus was on Kazuya, Heihachi's son, and a competitor of the tournament. Look at them eyebrows. You can flap them wings and fly, or at the very least, create a gust of wind. Kazuya hadn't seen his father in a long time due to their last interaction when he was a kid. You see, Heihachi wanted his son to become strong and ruthless like him. And it's Mishima's family tradition to take their firstborn child and chuck him off a cliff. This would teach them character and uh, discipline, and loyalty, and love. <laughs> but it, it doesn't always work when a grown ass man wouldn't even likely survive a fall like that, even if they hit the ground using a bubble suit. It's a volcano, so once you hit the ground, you gotta pop them dangling Lego legs back on and start running uphill. Luckily for Kazuya, though, he did survive. My ankles are broken! They're surely broken! So because of that, Kazuya goes on to train his whole life to get revenge on his father for deeply scarring him. Kazuya has always given me, like, Vegeta vibes. And in this adaptation, it seems quite accurate. Kazuya kind of looks like Vegeta, too. <laughs> if he had long, flappy monarch eyebrows. There's also Jun Kazama, who takes a spot as the second main character to this adaptation. She is an agent for a wildlife protection organization, but there's something special about her. She can sense powers within others, you know, and she can tell if if it's like evil power. She knew Kazuya as kids, and after he was thrown off a cliff by Heihachi, she saw it all happen and she tried looking for him, but couldn't find him. So when she found out about Kazuya attending the Tekken tournament, she followed him, and throughout the movie, she tries to free him from the dark power within him. Other characters from the first two Tekken games make an appearance, and some of them even get a fair amount of screen time. Their introductions aren't even half bad. Jack gets one of the best introductions compared to the rest, and his side story is pretty damn interesting. He's an android that developed emotions, and because of it, he protects a little girl that has a sickness which is slowly killing her. So he wants to get in the tournament to reach a secret lab within the island where the tournament is taking place at so he can save the little girl with the help of a researcher called Dr. Boskonovich. And that's another thing. This movie includes secret characters like the doctor himself. Even Roger the boxing kangaroo, he has a part in the story. It's not really even a pointless cameo if you think about it. There are some characters that only appear in the background like King and Yoshimitsu but it's not too bad because you do get a fair amount of characters with their own introduction and the right amount of screen time here so they couldn't fit them all. 
And for those who were only seen in the background, their inclusions aren't pointless either, because they showed up in the tournament and that is what happened in the games. Those characters did compete. Not everyone will get to be a part of the main story, but that's okay because you at least get to see that everyone that was in the games does make an appearance in the story here, so it's pretty damn accurate, basically. I also like this particular art style for the movie. I like seeing the little extra details on faces, like the nose will be detailed and not simply a dot or a tiny slanted half triangle. Now, the beauty of a fighting game adaptation is to see your favorite characters fight exactly like they do in their respective video games, right? I like that they at least look like they do in Tekken 1 and 2 here, but sadly they don't fight like they do in the games. There are entertaining fight scenes, mostly short, but you'll still get a kick out of them. Kazuya's fight with Heihachi was pretty damn entertaining. I like when Heihachi elbows Kazuya in the forehead like Nick Beam. <laughs> There's a lot of good scenes here for sure. There's this other part where Lei Wu Long is using his stealthy maneuvers around the island to enter a guarded cave. He is spotted by one of the guards and Jack appears from the water and grabs the guard's head and breaks it open like a coconut. Eh, I'm kidding, he just tosses him aside. In the first Tekken game, Kazuya beats Heihachi in the tournament and throws him down the same cliff that Heihachi threw him in years ago. Then in Tekken 2, Heihachi got him back by defeating Kazuya in the tournament and re-throwing his ass down that same cliff. <laughs> it's so goddamn silly, isn't it? So, because no one was thrown down the cliff at the end of this tournament, I can't be 100% sure which Tekken tournament this movie is taking place in. I want to say it's the first Tekken since Kazuya won at the end, but with everything blowing up and Heihachi escaping, I can't see Kazuya ending up with the prize money and the throne for the Mishima Zaibatsu. It also doesn't help that we have some characters from Tekken 2, and even Yoshimitsu has his new costume from Tekken 2, so it's like a mix of both. But I won't say that's a bad thing since it's a little twist that doesn't exactly ruin the story going forward. Especially since both Kazuya and Heihachi would continue to survive being thrown down the same cliff over and over. By the end, Kazuya was able to defeat Heihachi, and just as he was about to throw him down the cliff, June stopped him and managed to calm him down and convince him not to do it. Years go by, and we see that Jun is shown to have a son, called Jin Kazama. And the film ends. What I honestly can't believe here is that, after seeing this movie for the second time, I feel like this movie is a great Tekken adaptation. I don't know why I didn't like it at first. I first saw this movie years ago, like 2006, so this is my second time watching it, and Back then, I just, I, I remember I didn't like it at all. So I'm surprised that it's the exact opposite reaction now that it's been many, many years later. My real complaint now is that the characters don't exactly fight like they do in the games. That's one thing I'm always looking forward to in a fighting game adaptation, but what I'm also looking forward to is seeing characters from the games appear and act like they should. Those that do appear in this adaptation act like they should and dress like they do in the games as well. So that's awesome. I like the introductions for each character that played a small part in this movie. It sucks that not all of the fighters that appeared in this movie ended up getting a little bit of screen time, but it's like I said, it's understandable since there isn't enough time to like dive into each character, giving them an intro and screen time for each and every one of them. We see a couple of them like Bak Du San and Ganryu fight, but they're easily beaten up. I think Bak deserved a, a better fight scene than this though. I know in the story he doesn't win in the first tournament he competes, but he still has an interesting arc, like becoming my favorite character's teacher at his Taekwondo dojo. And I believe that this is the tournament where he ended up disappearing for a long time, right? But again, I'm not going to complain about him and the others like Law, King, Paul, or Yoshimitsu not getting enough uh, screen time, well, not getting any screen time whatsoever, basically, just being in the background. because. Those that were given their, their own like intro and scenes were perfectly portrayed. Bruce fans will likely disagree, but even though he lost with just a single punch, I think his intro was cool. Plus, he might have had a chance to defeat Jack if he knew that he was fighting an android with like titanium armored skin. After all, 
he easily dodged that first attack. I also think that it's not that bad to see some of these characters easily get defeated because this is the first Tekken tournament after all. Characters become stronger and more skilled over time, so I can believe that some of them could easily have gone into this tournament overconfident and lost quicker than any. I think it was pretty fucking dope though when Michelle tries to kill Heihachi with a tomahawk the second he reveals himself to all combatants, and he doesn't even block or dodge it, he parries with his teeth. When Kazuya fights Michelle, he performs a juggle combo, so isn't that sort of close to the games? <laughs> it looked like a juggle combo, it was like three and stuff. It was short, so uh, that's how we could probably say that maybe it wasn't. But then again, in Tekken 1 and 2, you could pretty much defeat opponents with like three hits, like three strong hits. So there you go, believable as well. Michelle may have gotten completely wrecked, but she proved to have a lot of heart and she wouldn't even give up when she knew she was completely outclassed. Lee Xiaolong was the best of all antagonists, in my opinion. I love how he was using both Nina Williams and Anna Williams to try and get rid of Kazuya before the tournament begins. He tries to prove himself to his father since he is the adoptive son of the family, especially since Kazuya stands in his way of inheriting the Mishima Corporation once he gets rid of Heihachi. He fails to get his assassins to eliminate Kazuya, then tries to send out his own bioweapons against those on the island as if he was Sir Spencer himself, then faces off against his brother Kazuya only to get easily pushed aside by him. Then Heihachi appears and Lee tries telling his father to let him continue his fight, but Heihachi just bitch slaps him out of the way. I mean, give him points for trying with all these attempts, but after this, <laughs> he loses it and gets rid of his own staff just so he can set the self-destruct system in the building. Has been initiated. Countdown begun. Five minutes to detonation. Ah! The best good guy character for me would have to be Jack. Can you believe that Jack of all trades over here ended up being one of, if not the best character in the movie? He was the first Terminator to develop emotion and done in a right way if you ask me. Especially since the Terminator movies couldn't even make it sound believable. Every time Jack was on screen, I knew something badass would happen. So a lot happens in just one hour since that's the length time of this movie, right? We get side stories for a lot of characters, the real Tekken plot is current with this adaptation, nothing feels rushed, maybe except for some fights that could have benefited from being a bit long. Some of my favorite moments are when Nina attempts to kill Kazuya at his hotel room. This is why I wish fight scenes were a little longer because of memorable scenes like this, but as short as they are, they're still just as very much enjoyable, especially with that substituted rock music for the English dub. Honestly, this just was a great adaptation for me. I don't understand what I even wanted to see in a Tekken adaptation after my first viewing of this flick. Cause if you didn't like it, ask yourself, what should the first Tekken movie be like? What's the story gonna be? Who should it concentrate on? Who should appear in it? How many characters can you fit in it? How many should you include? And how does it end? If you can come up with a better story than this, write that shit down in the comments because I really want to hear some ideas. But for what we got here, I love it. I have my nitpicks, but they aren't too bad to ruin the entire flick. The music in the English dub is so badass, it's one of the main things to look forward to here. I mean, they included Stabbing Westward, Corrosion of Conformity, Soul Hat, The Urge, The Offspring. Dude, that's the shit right there! I love it when the English dub version of an anime flick includes a kick-ass rock soundtrack. That's pretty much what we're listening to while playing the fighting games that they're adapting anyways. But since this movie has a bad reputation, it leaves me wondering if I'm the only one who now sees this movie as a great Tekken adaptation. I asked my friend Faded Blossom what her thoughts are on the movie since she's a huge Jun Kazama fan and uh, the movie's mostly focused on her. Very good question to ask an actual, true Jun Kazama fan ever since the good old days of Tekken 2, and has stayed loyal in supporting her for over 27 years, and will continue to do so. <laughs> do I enjoy Jun's portrayal in this movie? It's a mixture between yes, but partially no. 
Knowing the fact that many people take this movie into consideration of her past being canon, which it isn't. Jun is six years younger than Kazuya, and those who are aware of what has happened to Kazuya when he was five years old. The time Heihachi threw Kazuya off of the cliff. Jun wasn't even born during this moment, so within the flashback scene of them being children to know each other, and of her asking this ridiculous question... Why are you so upset? Is it because your father threw you off that cliff? What? Jun would never be angry at someone, let alone Kazuya, if she knew this happened to him to ask such a thing. If anything, she is a character who is concerned for other souls that are troubled. In this case of Kazuya, she would have instead said, I can only understand why you're upset, but is there more to your anger at your father? Because remember, Jun has no idea that Heihachi threw Kazuya off the cliff nor even knew who Kazuya was until the organization she worked alongside as a wildlife organization officer told her to investigate the wildlife animals being taken from their homes by Kazuya, in this case, Alex and Roger. If anything, her having Kazuya's locket would still work in her favor if she happened to have traveled nearby the area and picked it up in her journey to keep it within her possession to find out who lost it, and by seeing Kazuya's expression would know it was his. So in other words, yes I do, more so than that crap of a live action movie of what they did to my beloved angel Jun Kazama. Back to you, Scorpion! By the way, those clips you see of Jun Kazama gameplay, that's all Faded Blossom right there. She's a damn expert at Tekken, and I still haven't beaten her in a serious match. I'm not even close! She streams about every week and is a talented voice actress as well. A link to her channel is in the description, so check that out. So that's my review of the first Tekken animated movie, and if you're a Tekken fan and haven't seen this flick, or you too didn't like it the first time you saw it, I think you should give it a second chance. It might surprise you after seeing what happened when we got more Tekken adaptations later on. That's it for the video. Thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, and if you truly enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from this jabroni. I cover lore videos, facts, movies, and game reviews, all based on my favorite franchises such as Resident Evil, The King of Fighters, Mortal Kombat, Celebrity Deathmatch, The Mask, Dragon Ball, The Terminator, TMNT, and more. I'd like to give a very special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. This video is for you and I hope you like seeing your name at the end credits of this video. And if you too would like to see your name at the end of a new vid, be sure to join my Patreon where you also get to receive exclusive videos and updates such as new art panels for my Resident Evil Outbreak comic that I'm working on. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video and remember to have an awesome day.